you guys are full boat into the GSP thing. Yeah. Um, and you're dock jumping with them. And I know your story about how you get into it, but why don't you just give our listeners a little a little rundown on how you end up going from not being GSP owners and dock jumpers to the world you're in now? Absolutely. Um, it's a story that really started with when we bought our current home, the log cabin you can see behind us. We had moved here in 2009. And we, we actually had smaller dogs at the time. They're, they were used for hunting, they, but they hunted rats. They were uh, miniature <laughs> pitchers. And uh, so, you know, they, we decided we were going to get a larger dog when, when we, uh, you know, decided to get our next one. And I run a mortgage company. And we then, in order just to have something to frame and hang on the wall, I looked up the original deed to the home. So we found the doctor out of Philadelphia who originally owned our home. And just did a simple Google search, and it came back that he was a member at a local hunting club and had an award-winning German short hair pointer, um, who coincidentally was named Windy Spot. And our cabin has a lot of wind coming off the lake, and we thought that would be just the coolest thing if the the dog was named after the cabin, because this is where he was. I don't know if that's actually the story, but that's the one we put with it. So we, we decided we were going to get another dog, and, uh, and, and Ed came up for, for German short hair pointers. We didn't know a lot about the breed, but we decided we would go look, and there we found Lemoncello, who is, you know, next to Jenny, the love of my life, and uh, our first German short hair pointer. And we brought her home, and she absolutely changed the way that our lives run and work and what we do. And... You know, we, we from there ended up getting hooch and lager and we have some English pointer rescues as well. But really, Cello changed it all because she led us on adventures that we never knew. You know, we got into camping. We got into dock diving. We didn't we, even know what dock diving yeah, we, was. We didn't know what it was. And, and we found all of these things, these adventures that, that the GSPs have taken us on. And it all started just from a simple search of a deed so that we had something to hang on the wall of our new home. So... I, I, we were talking, I was talking to Kate off, off air about this. My experience with GSPs is pretty limited. I mean, I've been around them a lot. I've hunted over them a little bit. I've never owned one. And they're, so I'm, I'm aware, and I'm sure you are of like the, the myths and the misconceptions about GSPs. I mean, they're a high drive dog. Yeah. Um, they, there's, there's no denying that they, they got some go juice in them. Um, you know, they can make a phenomenal hunter. They can make a phenomenal house dog. They need to work though. They need something to do. And so with, with cello, with your first dog, was it like, did you just recognize that you had to give that energy some kind of outlet or did it, how did that come to be? Um, I think first, when we first looked at the breed, people had said, you're crazy. You don't hunt and don't get a dog like this unless you're going to hunt. They need a job. And if they don't have a job, they're going to cause some big time trouble. And that led us into, you know, well, we don't hunt. What else can we do? And it really started. We were, you know, we live on a small lake. So we were out back and it was just something we did. I used to take a tennis ball and throw it to cello. She would jump out in the water. And, you know, it was just a game we played and anything we could do at that point to wear her out, because you're right. A GSP is a high energy dog, you know, uh, for all your lab people, it's like a skinny lab on crack <laughs> and they just, they go and go. So I would take her out there and I would throw a ball in the lake over and over and over again. And I just happened to notice that she jumps pretty far off the dock to do this. And, you know, that's really how we got into the whole thing and uh, learn to find ways to wear them out is just by simple like you know we used to run her i would take her to the park and chase her and i noticed she was fast we would take her out back and swim her and i noticed she could swim fast and jump far and a lot of what we did and how we evolved into you know dock diving and you know the agility and all those things came from the fact that just just like people say we needed a way to wear out our gs mm -hmm. so uh before uh, there's some things i want to ask you but before we move on from that did all have all your dogs taken to water just are you doing special water introduction or anything with them uh, I, I will say that all except one have taken a water we have margarita who is an english pointer who came to us um she was a rescue that we got she was six years old when we got her and we generally find unless you get a dog who's in the first couple of years or reasonably insane it's hard to get them used to water 
the rest of them have. And I'm, I'm going to try not to spend the entire interview talking about Jello, but she's our teacher as well, because usually how most of them have learned to jump is we'll take Jello and them out back and they want to follow her. So she'll go into the water and they'll learn that there's no fear of it. They'll follow from there. Yeah. Like, you know, I, except for Margarita, yes, we have a, uh, a great success rate with getting them to swim, getting them to jump, and uh, and really enjoying the water. It's it's one of their favorite things to do. So I, I'm just curious about that because even in, in the world of labs or, you know, chessies or some dogs you'd think would just take to water like frogs, um, you still have to introduce them correctly because if they're pups and they have the wrong introduction, it can be almost as bad as gunfire introduction or live bird introdu- introduction going south. And GSPs just aren't naturally thought of as swimmers. But what you just said there, I think, is a point that a lot of people maybe don't think about when you're talking dogs and water and dock jumping and the whole thing. They enjoy it. If they if they've had the proper introduction, your dogs, I've seen the videos of your dogs. They're having fun. And my dog, my lab, you know, she's not jumping 23 feet, but she's jumping off of docks every chance she can. And you're taking two things, you know, like. Go, go take a, you know, go just yourself in warm water. Go jump off a dock sometime. It's fun. Dogs yeah. love it. And then you add in the retrieve aspect. And I think, I think that like we look at this and go, oh, I swim my dog to wear him out. Or, you know, I'm just introducing them to the water just to wear him out. But really, you found something that that dog in particular and the rest of your dogs, most of the rest of your dogs have learned to love and enjoy and like look forward to. Oh, without a doubt, their their favorite time is when, you know, we're going out on a lake because they know it's a separate door in the house. And when we start going to that door, they're running in circles. They're going wild. Their whole body shakes. And, and you're absolutely right. It's all about the introduction. You don't want to do it in extremely cold water. You don't want to do those things. You want it to be comfortable and fun. And the first thing to do is make a game of it. And I always say that all all water sports with dogs start with a drive. Everything starts with a toy drive because they want to go in, they want to retrieve, they want to play. And the water is just an obstacle for the plane. They enjoy the swimming after a while, but really the, the trick is toy drive. You know, just like when you're teaching hunting, you know, it, it's all it's all about going after that decoy. Yep. And and that's really how they learn swimming as well. And they get yep. also being patient with their confidence, too, because they may have the drive like Hooch had the drive, but he didn't have the confidence to jump in the water. So it took a good couple of months for that mm-hmm. to come along. But um, you know, without forcing him, he eventually got there. Well, that, that is a good point too, Jenny. Like we, we think of water introduction as you walk to the end of the dock, throw the dummy in and the dog jumps in, you're good to go. But really you need to be thinking about that. It could take a bunch of baby steps to develop their confidence. Cause they're all, they're learning at different speeds and their confidence levels. I mean, some dogs, my, my last dog, my, my golden retriever, the first thing she did on a dock was fall off and it was funny, but it was bad okay. because she never jumped off a dock since like after that, but she would, she'd retrieve ducks. Or if I'd stand on the end of a dock and throw the, the deadfall trainer out there in the water, she would run all the way back to land. Then she'd swim in. She would yep. not jump up. Yeah. And it, there was no, I tried, there was no breaking her of that. And that was just a dumb, I was just young, dumb move on my part. I wasn't paying attention and my puppy falls off the dock. Like little things like that with dogs can have, they're like kids, you know, like it can have a really big impact. So it's, I love hearing you say that you're, you're looking at each individual dog going, well, this one may not advance quite the way cello does. So we have to work around that. Yep. No. And I have to say, a lot of people's first impression is to, they want to push them off the dock. If the dog's not going to go, they want to do that. And the last thing you want to do. We actually have a rule in, uh, in all dock diving that if you ever push your dog in, you're eliminated from the competition. And it's not just because it's unfair. It's because you're actually, you're teaching the wrong behaviors and your dog is not going to trust you. And a lot of this comes down to trust. And, you know, the, 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 the owner dog relationship, and especially when you're asking them to do something that's unnatural, like jumping into the work, that's all about trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good rule. And it's a good lesson for anyone. Um, You really, shouldn't start with a dog if you're going to i know we're kind of going off into the weeds here but if you're going to introduce a puppy a three-month-old puppy or whatever to water pick something that's warm 
maybe play with them out in it, maybe make it July, yeah. you know, have them do a bunch of running and then pick warm water, you know, a pond or something with a hard bottom and let them just get in up to yep. their belly or something to get the top. confidence. Exactly. Cause that's that going in over their head the first time, especially if, if you're frustrated and you push them off there, they're going to associate you with that immediate danger. And that un, it's a bad bet. Don't do that. Yeah. Do, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of ways to introduce them to water correctly don't be that prick and push them off the dock just don't do it without a doubt i know i know we're getting deep into it but a little advice for those listening is one of the best ways to teach them how to go beyond their feet because a lot of them don't want to take that transition from being able to stand in the water to being able to swim in the water is i actually hold them and i'll walk out there with them and wade to where their feet are and you just hold them and bet them for a minute they learn like if you're holding them it's safe and then mm-hmm. you let them swim back. And you do that a couple of times and they get used to being off their feet in the water because yeah. that's the next transition. Once you get them in, it's being able to swim and know that they can swim and know that it's safe to get back out. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's just a process where you're just gauging, you're, you're giving them every chance in the world to succeed and you're just gauging their confidence level and good dogs that are, that trust you, they, they get confident quick. Yep. It's not a huge investment of time and it shouldn't be a super frustrating step in the process, but it has to be done correctly. Right. So you guys, uh, what I want to know is how do you, how do you go from just realizing, all right, this dog likes to chase tennis balls in the water and jump off a dock to being these lunatics with this awesome traveling camper and a boatload of dogs and, uh, you know, an Instagram feed full of selfies with GSPs. Like how, how did you, how did you get into the world of actually dock jumping competitions? I'll take the competition end of the question. As far as the Instagram feed, the pictures, the <laughs> publicity that's come from it, you, you got this one because uh, <laughs> I, I had nothing to do with that other than being the guy on the dock. Um, really what it was, was it was honestly, once again, going back to something that we said we were going to try just to have some fun with Cello. Mm-hmm. So we had noticed she was jumping pretty far off a dock. We had a camper at that point. And I had seen dock jumping, I believe it was on ESPN. I don't even remember where. I just knew it existed as a sport. Mm-hmm. And I had heard in the uh, on a local radio station that there was a competition that was about an hour south of us. And we said, you know what, let's go down. We'll, we'll stay in the camper. You could camp on site. And let's just have some fun with Chella for the weekend. We'll play around a little bit, let her jump in the water, whatever happens, happens. So we went down there and, you know, doing as Cello does um, in that competition, she came in second overall. And for me, I was, I was hooked. I was done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was then Google searching where competitions were all over the country. You know, I was going to leave my job and we were going to travel, <laughs> travel the country and just jump Cello in a pool. I don't know how much we made, but it would have made it. And, uh, you know, so then we went to another competition and she did really well from there. So what I really want to understand about that transition or that, that like move into that competition world, I'm, I'm always fascinated about the concept of the dog. Like everybody gets that one. And we had, I don't know if you've ever heard of Josh Miller. He's a, he's a trainer out of Wisconsin, uh, does a lot of really cool stuff with British labs and, he had a dog, Easton, where we, we did a podcast about this dog, and I got to meet this dog, and he was he was a game changer for Josh. Josh is a trainer. He owns a kennel now. Um, it literally, that dog, owning that dog changed the course of his life and shaped what he does now. And I hear that with you guys. You know, I heard it before, and I'm hearing it again. And I think, I, I just, I, w- I want you to go into that a little bit with Cello, because not only not only did this dog introduce you to some of this stuff or get you to think about it, but it also happens to be phenomenal at what you're doing with her. So she there's there's something more going on there, something more special about this dog. You know, and, and that's the thing. And I'll get into everybody else as well, because, you know, believe me, we have five and a foster. So six phenomenal dogs in the house. But Cello was the one that started it all. And really what it is, is is everybody says two things about GSPs. They're smart and they're energetic. And she exemplifies both of those things in spades. 
There was never anything, you know, our bond, there was never anything that I asked her to do that she wouldn't do. There was never anything that I tried to teach her that she couldn't learn. And I, I know that I sound like somebody who, you know, just is almost delusional about the dog they're talking about, but she is really just a phenomenal dog. She really is. Um, you know, as we went through the process, there's multiple games within dock diving or in anything we've done. There's, you know, extreme vertical and speed retrieve. And everybody used to joke around with me at dock diving competitions when we got there. The cello, like I was more of a hindrance to cello up on the dock than I was a help. <laughs> Because we would get up there, she would know where to sit. She would know what to do. We have funny pictures of her looking over at me like, what, what are you doing here? Yeah, we have pictures um, of her that literally yeah. look like she's, you know. You know, Shell, and the discipline that she has in, in that drive is really what makes her as good as she is. For, for an example, there, there's games in dock diving where the dog is trying to get down to the pool to race to get something. And... Not only was she phenomenal at it, but she was so controlled that everybody else has to like hold their dogs back, has to physically hold them back. And then when the timer goes off, they have to release them. Mm -hmm. I could literally stand next to Cello, totally hands off. And until I said go, she wasn't moving a muscle. And no, I've never seen anybody else in dog dogs do it. But it also gave me a competitive advantage because I didn't have to worry about holding her back or releasing my arms, mm -hmm. which you may not think it's a big deal, but really that's, you know, a couple of tenths of a second, which to decide most of these competitions. Yep. And just the fact that she was that disciplined allowed us to excel. And the fact that she learned any technique you wanted to teach her, you wanted to change it up. You wanted to practice different. You wanted to, you know, switch the way that you're working with her. She adapted to anything. And, we, we always say, like, because we, we have Hooch and Lager, and they're both phenomenal as well, what they do, by the way. I don't want to take anything away from Hooch, who happens to be, for multiple years, the number one dock diving GSP in distance in the country. So I don't want to take anything away from him. Mm -hmm. But um, we always thought we were so good at training because Jello was so good at what she did. And then, and and then, then, Hooch, and came then Hooch came along, and we discovered we, discovered we had to learn. But a lot of the things we learned with Cello are what we adapted to, to make Gooch as good as she is. And like I said, he followed her a lot, which she helped us train the rest of them as well. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I love all of them and I love all of them equally, but she was definitely a game changer in our life. <laughs> um, so Josh, one thing he said about Easton, which, which you just kind of said there, is he said that dog turned out in spite of me. That dog turned out amazing, even though he, you know, at the time he didn't really know what he was doing. I suspect he's being a little bit humble because he's a phenomenal trainer. And the same thing with you guys. And that's what I want to ask you about, Jenny, is like, what, how much time were you putting in once, once you guys figured out this dock jumping thing is we, we, we like this. I mean, how much training time are you putting in? And, and what you just mentioned, Brian, and I'd kind of like you to touch on this, Jenny, is like what you're saying is cello's steadiness is off the charts and steadiness is a phenomenal attribute for sporting dogs i mean if you if you look at a duck dog you want to know the difference between a good one and a great one steadiness mm -hmm. and it sounds like your dog is crazy on that so I, I jenny in your words like what how much time honestly like were you putting into this like once you got into it were you training for it or are you just letting him do his thing or her do his thing and develop or how, how's this going Oh, uh, I mean, more, I think with cello, she kind of just went and did her thing and people would ask us, you know, well, how do you train them or what are you doing? And what you, you must know something we don't because she's good. And we're like, she's making us look good. We didn't really know anything. She's teaching us. When Hooch came along, it was a completely different story. Not only did he not want to go in the water, but he didn't want to, he didn't want to jump off the dock. He would go in the water and walk in, but he wouldn't go off the dock. He eventually started following cello. But he was a little bit more of a work in progress where, um, you know, Cello just kind of got up there and did her thing and, and you know, we looked good for it. And Hooch took a little bit of work, a little bit of training. Um, and again, Cello played a big part in that as well. But we did spend and, and a lot of you talk about training and I, I'm not sure how it works with hunting. But a lot of what we do is once they learn this, the game, once they know the game, they don't forget the game. 
So a lot of the training we do isn't dock diving specific. Mm-hmm. It's more physical conditioning. Yeah. Um, it's about getting them in the best shape because the other thing is the training's a game. So if you play the same game every day, the game becomes tiresome. Especially the GSP. Yeah, so they're smart. They become bored. Mm -hmm. So we train a lot for physical conditioning, and the game remains a treat. So that anytime we do it, it's new, it's exciting, it's it's really like that's the drive to them. So, you know, you would see the training once the game is learned, kind of move off the dock, except for really just to make sure – fine tune and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's more to, to keep it fresh for them because the competitions are really where they excel at that. 